In today's video, I'm going to show you how I painted this fully working 3D printed treasure chest. So I've got this cool treasure chest that I just 3D printed and I am about to paint it and make it look like what you just saw. And I'm gonna go over all the pieces and parts because there actually was quite a few pieces for this because it's a fully working treasure chest. So let's go over that and then we'll get into what I do to make it look as cool as you just saw. So these are all the pieces you need to actually assemble this fully. You could just print this and put it together and not even make it a working thing. Just glue it up if you wanted to. Um, but to actually have it fully working, these are all the pieces you need. And it's in the Thingiverse file. I put the link of this Thingiverse file in the description below. So you can go down there and uh, download it. It's a very talented artist that has a lot of amazing models on there. And these I actually did at a 50% infill because I wanted these to be very dense because I didn't want the mechanisms breaking on me um, when you're like, you know, you go to turn this thing and suddenly it breaks and now you've got, you know, treasure locked in your treasure chest. So all of these pieces I actually printed very dense because I wanted them as solid as possible. Like you can hear like these and like the flex on this. You can see my fingers getting red by squeezing it. So they're all really strong. And this is all on just PLA, white inland. Okay, so after all of my troubles using my airbrush, um, I finally got everything primed and it is looking honestly pretty freaking sweet. I'm not gonna lie, a lot of cool detail and I cannot wait to start painting this. So first up is this burnt umber. Uh, this is just a really, really dark brown uh, that I love. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of slosh it on here and here, and I'm not gonna worry about getting it on these metal edges because I'm going to be painting over those as well. So I've got the wood here, and then I've got the wood on the front, the side, and the back. Uh, and let's not forget the other side since I showed you all the sides. Um, so I'm gonna take care of that first. I'm gonna leave the inside black. So one of the things is I do not use paint thinner or any kind of thinner when it comes to just acrylic paints. Since it's a water base, I just add more water and it really thins it up pretty good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put in a few drops to get this really, you know, smooth paint. Okay, there we go. Both of them are base coated. Now, the one thing I will say about cheap paints, they're cheap, but they take more paint because there isn't as much pigment in, say, this brown as there is this brown. Well, obviously the size comparison. Imagine this in a small bottle or vice versa. So what it is, is the more expensive paints have actually more pigment in them than the cheap paints, which means it takes a whole lot less paint to use the little paints as it does the bigger paints. So why am I even saying this right now? Well, mostly because 
when this dries, you can see the black show through. I do want that to an extent. So the next time I'm going to go over this again with the same color, but I'm not going to be as heavy as I was because I do want it a little darker on the inside cracks. All right, for the most part, it's pretty much dry. Uh, I'm just kind of rushing this because I want to get this base coat down. But uh, I am going to go back over and not as heavy this time. Now I'm gonna be wiping off my brush and I'm just kind of be going along the edges like this and leaving the dark spots. So if you see that, I can get really close here. You can see that I'm just going along the top because I wanna get it in there. And if it does get in the cracks, I'm not, I'm not concerned. Okay, so I am going to lay down some paper towels just to avoid a giant ink mess. So I've got my DIY ink wash and I've actually already made a video on how I make this. So you can actually go back to that video. I'll put a little card right there for you to look at that. So here we go. I'm going to just put some wash in there. And then I'm gonna throw that around. I've got this destroyed brush that I use for my wash. And all I'm gonna do is get it on here and just paint it. Let that get in the cracks and let it flow back and forth. Then whatever comes out, comes out. Okay, we're all dry and we've got a really nice look to it. It's looking really aged. And now is the, almost the last step. Now, the ink wash did not darken these cracks as much as I want them because I really want that cartoony kind of look. I do like how it got darkened it inside the like swirls and the grain of the wood, but in between these slats, I would really like it to be like almost black. I'm going to just use straight up black and I am going to dilute this a lot. I'm going to get it really watery and just kind of drip it down in here and let it flow. It's almost like a makeshift ink wash, but not. It's going to be a little thicker than a wash. Um, you can think of it as more of a glaze, I guess but I'm going to just water this down so it's super runny and let it just flow in these cracks.
Okay, we're at the last step. This thing is looking really sweet. Um, now we are going to do the last dry brush. And what I'm going to be using is this Folk Art Honeycomb. It's a good like caramel, tan, brownie kind of look. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this. And this, I'm actually going to go with a little bit of a lighter, a softer dry brush because I, want to be very light with this because the detail is going to pop like crazy once I start doing this. So here we go. Okay, so that's it. We are done with the wood. We have it nice and aged looking and it's brought out a lot of detail. And now we just need to move on to the metal. And now I am going to clean up all of these nasty edges where I said I didn't care about it if I got it brown everywhere. Um, I obviously didn't because it's everywhere. So now I'm going to just go over this with black and get a nice edge all the way along, along, alongside this, along the edge. Yes, along the edge. And I'm going to make it as clean as I can because I do not want to get it on the wood and ruin that and have to redo some of that. Okay, so here we go. I think one of the big keys here to when you are painting things like this that have so many different edges and surfaces is it's really important to focus on one spot and make sure you get everything in that area and then move on. Um, if you notice, I kind of take the front panel and work all my way around each little section. I don't just take one top edge and I go all the way around. Doing that, you can really start to miss things. Okay, ta-da, black. Now, what I'm going to do is get a smaller brush and actually do the edging because that was just getting it near the edge and I actually didn't paint the edge. I am going to make this just a little bit thicker so it doesn't bleed. And here we go. Bottom of the chest is done. Here we go. Top. Time for edging. So now comes the metal. I was going back and forth and I really wanted to have like more of a wrought iron, but once I've gotten it like this and I've seen with the clean edges, I just feel like it's not enough. Uh, I want this to have a real Zelda kind of feel to it uh, just because it calls for it, I feel. And over time, 
of painting this, I've kind of realized I think I just need to make it uh, a kind of a burnished gold, like an old worn chest. So I'm going to use rub and buff. And rub and buff is one of my most favorite things to use because you're gonna see how fast this goes and it's gonna completely transform this thing. Disclaimer about rub and buff. It only takes a very, very small amount. And I always wear gloves. The stuff is kind of gross and nasty while it's wet, so I recommend having gloves. And my applicator is going to be a spouncer. It's a half inch spouncer, a tiny little guy. Um, because I want to be able to really control where I'm going with this and then I will show you how I'm going to do it So first since it is messy and it can get places What I do first is always clear my entire workspace that way. I don't make a huge mess on top of my huge mess all right And then I get more paper towels and uh, this episode is brought to you by Bounty. Uh, no, not really. I just use a lot of paper towels for what I do. I wish I could use cloth and things like that and not waste paper towels, but this stuff doesn't wash out. I've tried. All right, so here we go. We got our spouncer and we got a rub and buff. And I am going to show you how much you need and I am going to go like that. And that's too much. So it kind of globbed out on me. This is such a great tutorial. Okay, so now I'm going to basically, now I'm just gonna rub this off. I don't want a lot on this. It's not really a dry brush. I'm just trying to get it off because I mean, it's gonna go a long ways. So there you go. I've got my sponge saturated. All right, once my sponge is saturated and I've wiped off all the access I could, I'm barely going to touch this and you're gonna see how it's just gonna start becoming a gold chest. There is our chest. So now we have the pieces and parts we have to take care of. First, I'm gonna handle the rings and they go on the side right here. So I'm gonna get these uh, all gold. So these now match and now we have the pins that keep the lid on. These are the only parts you see so I'm just gonna hit those a little bit, not much. There we go. And here's the mechanism that it goes down in the lid to keep it locked. The last part is the key and I've been thinking a lot about the key. So I'm not gonna use the antique gold for the key. I'm actually just gonna use pure leaf gold for the key. This is what I'm going to use. It's just gold leaf and it's gonna make it extra bright because I want this key to be super shiny and thinking you're going to get this beautiful chest and then you get this old looking thing. So the great thing about spouncers is they are super cheap. You can get like a big bag of them for a few bucks. And the bad thing about a spouncer when you're using rub and buff, it is garbage after you've used it because it'll start to harden. There's really no way to wash this thing. And the sponge really starts to degrade and it's just not worth it. So 
throw it away. All right, so the first part is I'm going to put the latch in there. And just so I make sure I put it in the right way, we have the tumbler that goes in like this and it goes inside. So it actually goes down like that. So it's gonna go into the chest like this. And this is gonna take some force, especially because of my infill. And there we go. So the next part is the tumbler. And all I'm gonna do is just put this right in there. Yep, like this. And I gotta make sure it's straight up and down when it goes in. There we go. Okay, and my key fell apart. I'm gonna leave that in there just in case. Then we have this cover. It's pretty black, but hopefully you can see, but this cover actually has a taper on it and it just slides right in there. Then we're gonna turn around and we've got these holes. This has actually got a certain shape so it only fits in one certain way. And there we go. Good to go. Now I just gotta stretch these apart and make them fit right there. Holy crap. <sighs> Woo! That was hard. There we go. So I can already tell this little plate keeps coming off, so I'm going to have to actually glue this. So the last part is this little jewel. So what I wanna use is this kind of metallic-y red for the jewel. It's garnet and just a full cart. I've honestly never even used it, so I'm kind of excited to try it out. Uh, but first thing I know that this is a really dark surface, even with the gold. So I am going to have to base coat this white so this will show up beautifully. Okay. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just enough pigment on there for the emerald red to ruby red to really show up. Okay, so we're all dry. Now I am just going to use some Gorilla Glue Super Glue. I like this kind because it also has a brush and a nozzle. Okay, we've got ourselves a key, people. It's got a nice little sheen to it. It's, it's a nice gloss and it's like a metallic kind of look. It's kind of cool. So we got a key, and let's go test this thing out. All right, we have a treasure chest, and it is locked. So we're gonna need a magic key, and here we go. Turn the key, and there it is, it opens. And then we can lock it, fully working treasure chest. I'm gonna go ahead and give some spins of this and you can look at that. I really like this project and I plan on doing a lot more just short little projects like this that I get off of Thingiverse.
Other than that, I just hope you guys have a great day.